I'm Renee Ritchie, and I'm a tech analyst. I'm Georgia Dow, and I'm a psychotherapist. And welcome to Apple Talk, where psychology meets technology. And they both intersect as we talk about Microsoft, Amazon, Apple. Facebook, Google. Oh, Facebook. I almost forgot. Intersect or it like explode. Sometimes explode, sometimes intersect, sometimes neither. So I gotta admit, I'm a little bit nervous for this show. Why? Because I, I think some I think people know this, but anytime anything goes wrong with Apple, I get blamed. It could be Apple putting satellites in orbit to bl and that you get you get upset that it's blocking out your view of Venus, or it could be that your phone restarted. Right, right. Um, or my contacts don't sync. Yes. Or yes, I get. Um, or I call you and it chooses to use FaceTime oh, audio. We gotta fix that. God. We gotta fix that. So like, I feel like there's a technically adept person who, in general, gets gets blamed for all the technology in the house. But because I am so inextricably linked with Apple at this point, it's just all my fault. Yeah. Yeah. Why didn't you do something? Yeah. You so could I'm, have fixed this. All right. So I'm just. I don't know how you want to do this, but I'm just. I, I've I've spoken. I did a 43 minute video on this already. Yeah. And then I did a follow up 20 minute video on this. Yeah. So I figure it's fair to let you go. And then if, if you want me to, to, to like add anything, I will. Sure, sure. I don't okay. want to get in your way though because I don't want to get run down. Okay, so, right. so why don't you um, explain what I'm going to. Oh, okay, oh, what's happening? You think, oh, nobody yeah. knows. Because we didn't tell you. <laughs> someone might not know. It's been know. a whole week and nobody there knows. There might be someone that doesn't know that right. watches this show. Yeah, no, they, yeah, because they've been watching YouTube cooking videos all week. That's good too. Yeah, possibly. All right. Big so, out of out of nowhere, uh, Apple announced three child safety initiatives, and the first one is that Siri and Search will help you find resources on child exploitation if you ask, uh, and if you if you try to search for actual child exploitation, it'll tell you why that's dangerous and offer uh, help resources for that. The second one is communication safety. So if you have a device that's set up under family sharing, you know, like a parent set up the device, you didn't set it up yourself, and you're enrolled as a child device, and it's enrolled as a child device, if you're 17 and under, it can be set up to automatically blur um, sexually explicit images. Um, and then you'll have to tap saying, I really want to see this. It'll give you like a little information sheet saying why it can be harmful. Nobody should ever send you or, or ask you to send potentially like explicit images. And then you can tap again to see them. But if you're 12 years old or under, the parents can optionally enable a notification that gets sent just to them, not to Apple, not to police, but just to the parent saying that your child received an image, they click to see it, they click through a warning saying it could be dangerous, and they click through a warning saying we're going to notify you. Uh, and if they do all those three things, then the parent gets notified. Third feature is CSAM uh, scanning. And CSAM stands for uh, Child Sexual Abuse Material. And what that means is um, known existing images that are on a database that is assembled from NCMEC, which is the big organization about it, matched against a bunch of other child safety organizations and stored on the device, hashed and then rehashed with a neural hash and then blinded. So the actual database doesn't know what it is. And then as you start uploading photos to iCloud Photo Library, those photos get neural hashed and the two hashes are matched. If the hashes, well, actually regardless of what happens with the hashes, they're sealed up in a voucher and wrapped in like an encrypted envelope. Now, if the, match, the hashes don't match, those, those envelopes can never be decrypted uh, on their way to Apple. If those hatches, hashes do match, and they get a significant amount of them, and we learned just the other day that that amount is somewhere around 30. And Apple also sends fake ones too, because so they never know exactly what the number, the real number is. But when the real number gets to around 30, Apple is able to decrypt them. And then they can decrypt all of the vouchers that do match. And that goes to human review at Apple, which I only imagine is the worst job, like anyone who does that for any company, that's the absolute worst job. Uh, and if they confirm the match, it gets reported to NCMEC. Uh, which is a non-governmental organization, and then NCMEC is in charge of or, or is responsible for reporting that to law enforcement. Do you want me to go over the objections too, or do you want me to? No. Okay. No. You got those. I got those. Okay. All right. I got this. I, probably a different spin on it, but I, I have it. Okay. <clears throat> so, shame on you, Apple. Period. Shame on you. Shame on you. We trusted you with our privacy. You stood up to, I'm not gonna unlock a phone for terrorists, yet you have wrapped 
invading my privacy on my personal device. So not just the cloud, but on my personal device. So it is linked directly to me and then wrapped it up. This beautiful poop gift you wrapped up in your protecting children, which you're not in order to invade my privacy. And that I am so happy that almost no one buys. All of the articles are so strongly against this that Craig Ferricki himself has gone on this, I have to now try to make a spin out of this and you don't really understand the technology patronizing to try to say that this is gonna protect children, which it doesn't. Why? These are the photos. These are not people that are taking photos and actually endangering children. This is a set of already known photos that are just out there on the web that I'm going to say that some horrible people might be downloading and using, but they are catching the lowest common denominator and protecting no one to invade my privacy. And that disrespects me. And you know what? It disrespects Apple's sense on privacy and they have wrapped it up so that no one can speak against it because then you don't care about the children. And I think that that people now get, and it is so offensive to me that people talk about the tech, which when you talk about people spend so much time trying to explain, and that's what Apple tried to go out. Well, let's explain how we do it. And they're hashes and they're just ones and zeros. So we're not actually snooping on your phone. And people talk about that, that masks the actual ethics and morality of what they are doing. And for everyone that does that, you are also part of the problem. Mic drop. That's it. That's it. I'm so bloody angry. No, I'm not downloading iOS 15. I've turned off to updates. And though, you know, oh, if you turn off the cloud, you know, soft, soft rule from Apple, if you turn off the cloud, they can't do this. This is not, if they really didn't want gross photos on the cloud, they would have done this so that no gross photos could get uploaded to the cloud, which they totally could have done with the exact same measures that they're using for this, but they didn't want to, they want to snoop on your phone. And whenever someone takes an extra step to do something, they could have done it just on the cloud, but now it goes to the cloud, to our phone, back to the cloud, then to a person. Really, I believe that they did this for autocratic governments so that they can later sell that, you know what, we can get rid of pictures of A, B, and C that you are talking about, unionization, you have this flag, you are pro A, B, or C. We can find them, link them directly to the person so that we can sell more phones in autocratic governments, authoritarian governments, places where they want to control what you think, see, or do, and link it directly to you. That's the only thing that makes sense to this. And that they're going out with such a strong spin, trying to grab the most popular people to make sure that they can spin this around to try to say, no, Apple is doing a good job and you are still protected and everyone's doing it. Like when they're saying like, you know, everyone's doing it and like Facebook is doing this too and they're doing worse. When they're using Facebook as a shield, you know we are in trouble. And that means Apple's in trouble too. But people have very short memories, so I worry that our outrage will be short-lived. But for me, it will probably be long-lived. So I wanna go back to that, because I think that's a very salient point. Would you have been okay if Apple had just announced that they were gonna be doing server-side scanning the way Google and Facebook and Microsoft do? I wouldn't like that either, no. They, if they don't want photos, because this does not, this is not going after rings of people that are actually creating these, right? But if they just said, listen, you shouldn't upload these pictures, just like you can't upload, you know, NSF content onto the app store, totally all the power to them. Snooping into my phone is never okay. It's mine. It's not yours, Apple. It's mine. You don't have a right to touch what's on my phone or look at what's on my phone. If you get served with a warrant and you have to go through with that, you know what? I don't love it. I don't think that that should happen, but fair. There's a warrant. There's been a court that's taken a look at this. This is circumventing the law to snoop in my pri privacy. This is minority report to me. This is you taking a look just in case I'm committing a crime. <clears throat> and that everyone's like, well, if you don't engage in these photos, you shouldn't worry, which is the same thing that we've talked about for so many times about privacy, is a horrifically bad argument, a horrifically bad argument argument. And yeah, Apple's giving all kinds of fancy dancy, juicy interviews to the people that can do that so that they can try to get their information out there. 
but I am so happy that no one's buying it. I am so happy that still the first three pages on Reddit on our Apple are still, what in the world are you doing Apple and why the hell is this happening to us and what are we gonna do about it? Good, good on everyone. So um, let's, let's break this down a little bit. What is the psychology behind <clears throat> all of this? Like what is the psychology of first using something like um, child exploitation or you know, the other popular example is terrorism. Yeah, um, but they stood up to terrorists. Yeah, no, I just mean like when, you, when, saying, when these discussions... I, yes, yeah, no, okay. no, no, for sure. I'm just, sorry. When these discussions happens, like those are almost always the two topics that come yes. up. Yes, because they make you look like a horrible person if you stand up against it. So that then they can, like... And right away when someone says that and it doesn't actually do what they're saying, you have to have that light bulb go where they're saying, we're ch protecting children where they're not. They're, they're not protecting. These are already people that have been found out. This is already on a database. They're not finding anyone. This is just the people that have searched out creepy photos, which is bad also. But this is not actually protecting the children that were exploited. This has already happened. These are very, very old. So um, most of them are very, very old. And they're not, it's not even a perfect system. So when that is something that someone used, it is almost always a smokescreen. Almost always so that you can't go up against it because it just makes you look bad. You don't care about children is what they can say. We're, we're protecting kids. So then let us do this creepy little thing to protect you. Whenever, they use, whenever someone uses the tactics of fear and whenever this happens in advertising, on the news, in politics, whenever someone tries to make you feel afraid, you should always be worried about what are they actually trying to do? Because we already know that Fear shuts down our cognitive part of our brain, right? We're like, oh my God, that is so horrible. I need to protect myself, take my privacy, take my rules, take my money, and we'll give that away willingly to keep ourselves safe. And Apple knows, like, I can't believe that Apple would do this to us. I really am so shocked and I feel betrayed. Like we've, I've covered Apple for now, like, don't do the math. I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say how long. It's a really long time, and I I know that no one would really call me an Apple fangirl uh, because I will go after Apple with fervent joy um, when they do something wrong. Like Siri. Uh, don't even. <laughs> okay. I, I have a whole Siri story. I have a whole Siri story from this morning. No time. No time. But it's it's just I feel so betrayed that they would do this in such a ham-fisted way and really not care about us just so that they could make more profit and you know that's why they're doing it like because it doesn't actually do what they say so is there when when people phrase these arguments um i tend to see a lot of absolutism like you see some people from the child safety community or th those organizations in specific the ones that are working with apple on this say like you know if you're against this then you're against like what you said child uh, yeah you safety. don't care about um, children and you see some people who i would call uh privacy extremists mm. say you know like there, there can be no middle ground you're either 100 percent pure privacy or you're against all privacy can you sort through the facts and make a rational discussion and say that this is like, I understand the child safety argument. I understand the privacy argument. Looking at this, um, I still think it's right or I still think it's wrong. Can you make a decision based on the facts without being one extreme or the right. other? And I think that, like, extremes are always bad, usually. Like, there, there's some things that extremes are not bad, but almost for every case, any extreme argument is wrong. But when we say that there's, like, two sides of an issue, that doesn't mean that they are equal. Almost everyone, almost everyone that... Um, is, is even a little bit involved in technology is fervently against well, That's the false equivalency bias you see in a yes. lot of reporting. It's like, yes. there's two sides to this. One person said yes. this, and then they, 99 they person put said on the this. News two people, two one people. One from each, even though one yeah, yeah. is one person, one is 99 people. One is people. 99% of the population. Yeah. And so then people believe so how that do you it judge is equal to that. that sort of thing. Really, you should not, like you should research everything yourself and see how it's done and look into it. But the problem is, is that we don't, we consume media like we consume like pretzels. Like it's like kind of quick. Do you have that ready? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I was just ready for that, that, that argument. Um, and and it, it's gooey and it gets stuck in your cheek. So you want it already pre-chewed for us. We don't want to go through the effort. And because of that, we just read the headlines. Now, 
in this case, the headlines are really, you know, anti-Apple and, and really pro for, for keeping people's privacy. Um, but sometimes it won't be that case. And so then it will sway public opinion because everyone wants to be on the winning tribe. So you kind of, it kind of sways that. And if that's enough why people are for or against it, you'll tend it to be will, for or against it? It will change it. Yeah, because you don't want to be at a loss and you don't want to have to be always fighting upstream. That is exhausting for us and it makes us feel like we're not part of the tribe and the group. So you can often see people's opinions start to sway to the, the midline of where the masses are. And the more that you get information, the more that you talk about it, the more that you research things, the greater a chance that the majority of thought will win out. Now, if the majority of thought is educated, has researched it, knows what they're talking about, has gone through peer review, has looked into things, that's fine. But most of the time now, anyone has a voice. And so it could be anyone saying anything. And we also have like, that it was Craig Frederiki who's so popular for Apple and, and a a figurehead. Probably the second most recognizable person at Apple. Yes, besides Tim Cook. Um, and so loved and really affable, really sweet, really charming. Maybe not when the opening of that, that wasn't my thing, but <laughs> the opening of the people love you know, a little too much, but Bound people love wow, him. Wow. They chose him on purpose and he doesn't even head the project. I don't think that he had any hand in the project really, but they chose him for a specific reason because they wanted the most charismatic because people that have charismatic we want to believe them and i'm like and i think that a lot of people saw through all of it but so for other you, people it doesn't and that becomes very difficult how do you help people sort signal from noise um so for example it's the front page of reddit but uh th there are people who are fond of apple who are like very what's the right word have a high brand affinity with apple and they tend to think apple is uh, lambasted in the media, that every bet negative headline possible is about Apple, that Reddit's always going to complain about everything about Apple. How do they know that this is just the, like, oh, um, I don't know what a recent example might be, but like, you know, like whatever gate, whatever yeah. gate there is every yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is just another gate because it gets a lot of attention and this is an actual serious issue that I should set aside my brand affinity with Apple right. and think about seriously. So it like becomes, how do you know when it's real and when it's crying when wolf? It, when it's just, people, yeah. well, one is just, you know, you, you take a look at who the sources are for sure. That is a, a big issue to it. And I would research what does Apple say and what does it actually do? And if those two things are aligned, then, you know, they can act like when, so a long time ago, there was a signal problem when you held the phone in yes. a certain way. And Apple's like, you're holding it wrong yeah. at first, Steve. right? Steve, Steve <laughs> of course, himself was like, you're holding the phone wrong, which is hilarious. It became a meme. You get a bumper. You yeah. get a bumper. But then so he angry. actually did follow through. Like they actually cared about when they realized that, no, that's not, that's a ridiculous argument. You should be able to hold your phone anyway. They spent the money to be able to give everyone these little tiny elastic bumpers. He wasn't happy about it at all. He wasn't happy about it, but... They put their money where their mouth is yes. and fixed it. Yes. Um, though he did try to spin it. I'm not going to lie. He tried to spin, just hold it differently, which was ridiculous. And to this day, even during this, like on the last week at Twitter, I saw a bunch of people who I will say, I'm not going to out anybody, but I will say are really big, really respected names say that Antenna Gate was not was a fake controversy. When it was real, like you literally had an on off button on the side of the antenna. And that's that. We'll get into that in a second yeah. topic, but that's one of my concerns here because how do you know? Like I'll say, like Antenna Gate was a was a real problem. Like Apple would not have done all that if it hadn't been a real no, problem. Not be, They're not dumb. But, that, but that's the that's but people where think you it go was made through up now. it. Is that like there is no way that a company is going to how much did they spend on the little tiny bumper things? Uh, that like, plus it, they had an emergency that, like, press conference. Eight hundred thousand dollars. Steve came back from his vacation. Was it just me? It was yeah, almost no, but a million Steve, dollars. Steve coming back from his vacation is, 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 is more than the money. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. And giving them away for free. Yes. And doing a press conference and, and all of that. And talking yeah. about it. But whenever so Apple is not big on doing like press gigs like whenever there is a someone from apple is coming out to talk to you there is a serious problem there is no way that someone that is a multi-million perhaps billionaire is going to spend like they don't want the press the press is only bad for them they're already famous they're already rich they want to sit in their yacht and enjoy life so that they come to have to do an interview with something with someone um, or, or go out and do something out in the world is always a sign that this is 
serious and this is bad. Steve coming off from vacation and showing up to talk to people about this and then saying pretty much, which he never does, I was wrong. Now he didn't say I was wrong. He never said he was wrong. Did he ever say he's wrong? He, but he gave the numbers, which but that was like says after they wrong. made web pages that showed how other phones had a different issue, but yeah. how other phones like yes, they tried. They yeah. really tried to spin. They're going to not spend money if they can. So once they start coming out for the press, you have to know that this is that serious, and they want to keep it. They want this badly. They're getting a whole bunch of bad press, which costs them money, but they're still going to do it. So do you think? They, so here's my question: Do you think? Uh, because we just talked about the antenna gate where ultimately they like threw out the bumpers, you know um, Do you think they will continue to go through with this or do you think the pushback is heavy? Because so, so just for people who aren't aware they've already done a couple things They put out uh, a, like a new FAQ a new PDF almost every day. Oh, yeah, 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 um, yeah. They're putting out all kinds of materials. They had Craig spin, 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 on spin, spin, spin. to give more information like the 30 uh, right. thing and right. they've also said now that they're gonna have the database Not only does it have to match multiple CSAM databases, but they're gonna have it audited like by an external auditor to make sure no one tries to slip so anything more people can snoop on your phone into it thank you um well more people will know what what is being snooped on your phone yeah thank you um what in your ideal world like the world where georgia is the beyonder or that um be eternity world. or so <laughs> it'd be like just you'd be snapping just half of people not not half the people but half of people right um right what right. would you like to like this week a new news cycle what would you like to see happen what would I love to see happen? Yeah. What will never happen? No, no, I just want to know what, what you What I would love to see want. is that Apple says they're no longer going to do this. They're going to roll this back. They're going to stop them from being able to be on the server so that they never have to worry about having child um, pornographic Suzanne, yeah. images that are inappropriate um, and involving children. And I would even be fine if they said, if you tried to upload them to the cloud, that if you upload a certain amount of them, that they're gonna then um, flag you and send it out. That would not bother Just me. Just as long as it's done on the cloud and not as on your device. As long as you don't start snooping directly on my phone. This is not that I get flagged and then I get snooped on my phone. This is, it is going to be running on the background of everyone's phone. And that means your children's phone as well. I'm not okay with that. I'm really not okay with that. And it's one extra step for Apple. So why will they not do what I ask? is that it's not about protecting, because they could have done that right on the cloud, you upload it and people, you know, let's be honest, people are dumb, they would just do it. They would get flagged, they would send it out and that would protect those people that are doing inappropriate things, they would be able to be flagged. So it's not about that, that would have been easier. This is about selling phones in, you know, dictatorships. That is what this is about. And that is much more money than what they already make from the United States and Canada um, and, and Europe, like this, that's much more for them. That's much more growth in those areas. And so there is no way, unless there is a huge out, outpouring of anger, there is no way that they're going to do it because in the end, it is all about the bottom line and they can make much more money by being able to tell dictatorships that eventually, because again, once we get comfortable with this, they'll just take that one more step. And will they tell us that They'll just say that the government's made us do it, right? Oh, well, this was a lawful order that we had to do to all dissidents that are from this country or political activists or journalists. They'll say they were forced to by the government. And that will be the next step because now they can say that they can do it. And that's much more money than what we can, they will lose from us. So no matter what the outpour, they will just try to spin, 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 let it go out there People will update because they will not know. Totally turned that off again. I had automatic updates on too. You had me, Apple. It only took, I'm not going to say how many years. <laughs> Anyways, turned it off and um, they'll, that's, that's why. So no, this will not happen. So my, my, I did, like I said, I did a 43 minute video on this, um, explaining everything I possibly could about it. And then I did a follow up video where my suggestion, like if, if Apple, does not want this material uploaded to their servers and they don't want to scan the servers. Like if, if we just pretend or believe that those things are true, my suggestion was they do what they're doing with the new private relay feature, which is match the hashes and generate uh, those headers on a private relay server in between. So nothing gets done on our phone. Our phone is sacrosanct still. Cause I think another disconnect that I'd love to hear your opinion on is, let's say again, let's just say for the sake of argument, we believe Apple. Okay. 
they're saying they're doing this because it is a more private way of detecting this stuff. No, just for the sake of argument. I know, argument. I know, I don't, but can I, can I just say? No, but I want to I ask about fair, this. Fair, 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 fair. But how bloody ridiculous hold that on, is. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Go on. So, the, the, I want to search in your underwear drawer instead of what you bought to bring into your house. But, Go on. Um, the the di like because they're they're talking about the misunderstanding that we have about the technology. But it seems like even if everything that they say is true, if you're willing to grant everything they say is true, that to me belies um, belies not belial belial I think is a demon um, belies belals um, yeah a massive misunderstanding in how we perceive our ownership of our things. It's like my stuff. And it's, it's, it's not about privacy, it's about the, san the sanctity. Yes, of it's, it reminds me of when a store, you buy the products and then they make you take a look on checkout at uh, your bill to make sure you didn't yes. steal anything that are now my things, but I haven't yet left the store, so it's still their area. I find that still, like it bothers me. Like if you were it, sending stuff to self storage, but they came to your house to go through your stuff yes. before it went to self storage. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You so aren't looking at the warehouse. You're looking at my home before I bring it to the warehouse. No. So it's, to me, it's like data human syndrome, where like the thing that is approximating, like a decision making tree, just doesn't understand the emo like any of the emotional aspects of those decisions. Right. Except, unfortunately, I believe they do. Yeah. I believe they have a full understand. Like Apple is not a stupid company. They don't make mistakes. Like they they do. Like and we'll go after them, but the mistakes are usually really really small. Like, you know, a color that doesn't match properly. Um, you know, the antenna's in the wrong spot because they tried something new. Buttons that get stuck. This is huge and they've been they've been touting privacy for Ever. And that was the reason that people buy Apple products. One is they were easy to use, they have great customer service, but privacy was a big deal. That they would go against their own motto, right? When Google gets rid of don't be evil, you have to go like, I say can be uh oh, evil now. <laughs> that's so you can be evil. When Apple goes after, you know what? It's not just we're gonna protect your privacy from governments, now it's us that are going to be searching through your stuff. You have to be like, what is up with that? And how does it benefit Apple so much that they will go against their own policy? So I want to pick up something you said earlier, because this is also a concern of mine a lot in general these days. When I'm not going to do the math, but when we were younger, um, there was like the Tylenol uh, poisoning and it almost cost them the company. There was like political figures who were accused of having an affairs and it cost them their careers. Yeah. Now we live in a time, and I'm not doing any what about is, I'm not doing any equivalencies here, but we live in a time where like major computer companies are found, I'll just say it, Sony famously rootkitted everybody to protect us against DRM. They, they basically took over our machines. Lenovo did a man in the middle attack to serve us ads, uh, you know, broke SSL to serve us ads because they were selling their computers so cheaply they needed the money from ads to actually turn a profit on those machines. Google famously has had a whole host of scandals. Facebook has had a whole host of scandals. Samsung literally had phones that were exploding and people did not want to give them back because they wanted the phone so much. Yeah. We live in a time of such hyper brand affinity, but zero, zero attention span. Because even now, I was looking at the headlines this weekend, people are largely moving on. They're talking about different things. They're talking about different stories, even different Apple stories. And the, our lack of attention is like, oh, meme. You know what I mean? It's like, oh my God, the world is ending. Meme. How, how do you even begin to parse that psychologically? So one is we, we, it exhausts us, right? It exhausts us. It's really hard to hear all of these negative stories all the time. It causes a huge cost to our mind. It is disheartening. It is upsetting. It causes a lot of anxiety. And let's just say it, the news has not been pretty. It's, the world is not a great place right now. Like the world so is much crumbling. Of it all over the place, this is just one more bad news story. And we want to be able to move on and pretend that if we close our eyes and say, la, 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 that when we open them, it's gonna be a different story. The thing is, is that it doesn't. Once we give this up, once we let go of this, and odds are Apple will not give in to this, um, then we're gonna have to make some really serious choices. And most people, like I am so stuck in the Apple ecosphere 
it's not an easy thing for me to be able to change. And they know that. And they can, again, gain so much profit versus what they lose with us. So we, we can't handle that for long periods of time. And so we move on to what is the next story or the next scandal that's interesting and new and curious or to horrific. us. And because the way that social media works and websites work, they need the traffic. So those get pushed to the forefront. People are interested in something new because this story is going to become old and everyone's going to know everything about it. And then they're going to move on. And so then all of the media that we consume as entertainment becomes about other things. And that's the weirdest thing to me. Like the weirdest thing as a human being is that we've gotten to the point I keep calling it 2020 Junior this year because it seems Mm. like 2020 Junior, that we get bored of calamity. Yeah, we're in calamity, right? Like when when there's bombings every day, eventually you're just used to that. It's a daily occurrence, yeah. Right? And, And people have to deal with that very literally. Like... There are much bigger stories. It becomes normalized. That are, that... It becomes normalized and we reach a threshold for that. So it no longer causes a trigger effect, an anxiety effect, because we see it oh, all the time. Oh, and we need our, our hit from doom scrolling. So we need that next. We, that becomes, it's almost like we've gone through an exposure to that type yeah, of trauma. Okay. And so we go on to the next type of thing that is, you know, that we consume. But there are also much worse things that are happening in the world. In comparison, like we do this talk on Apple News, but there's much worse stories also. So we end up with, we're used to this. We've seen it a million times. There's nothing new with that. We're kind of exposed to that so much that it no longer even bothers us. Um, And they do the, you know, well, every other company is worse. So I'm just going to stick with the best, worse thing. Um, and I just want to believe them because it would be so expensive and costly and it's emotionally to exhausting. We we want we want to because it's just too much. Is that like too a much. path of least resistance thing? Well, what else are our options, right? It becomes, what do we do then, right? If every company is taking a little bit from us and some are taking a lot from us, we'll choose which company is taking the least amount from us. So is it, just to, to deal with this, do you pick, do you pick your battles? Is that the... The, the best thing well, that you can do here? luckily, I have this podcast where I get to um, send a voice out into yeah. the masses that hopefully will send more voices out to the masses so that this stays in the news cycle. Because, like, I have, like, a 5% hope that if there's enough people and enough powerful, important, um, you know, not important, like, let me switch that, that there's enough people sending their voices out that it actually will economically matter to Apple not to do this and think about doing it in a way that it is not at the cost of everyone. Um, so my, my fear um, is that this will snowball. So we've already seen, uh, you and I have been talking about the new Canadian laws coming out. Yeah. There's new laws in India, uh, China, obviously, um, people in the US, in Australia, in other countries want to just destroy encryption entirely. And my, my fear with this is, <laughs> it's like so over the blow, but I guess it's not. It's like, you know, this is how democracy dies. And, but it's the people who are in charge of democracy who are in a way, like, my, so my hope is that this will become such an issue that it'll get folded into the new law. Like, like we will stand up, because we've done that before. Like, remember like some of the internet laws that came out? We fought, yes. like, we fought back against those, successfully fought back against those. My hope is that this becomes rolled into something that we decide is unacceptable. From, from a, so just for people who aren't aware, the current laws are mostly uh, companies have no responsibility to search, but they have a responsibility to report when they find. The new laws are mostly, and there's the EU version, the UK version, the Canadian, which the worst one, the yeah. worst one is Canadian, says that you have a responsibility to search. You have almost no time to respond to it, and you have massive Ma- they were most, yeah, they were mostly designed for like billion, trillion dollar companies, uh, no time to respond. And they are so bad that my hope is that we as a society uh, push back harder than we would otherwise. I hope so. And it sort of I rolls so. it all up and then... And you know, if they allowed us to, um, you know, encrypt our phones so that Apple... Like, they, there, there are ways that we could... Um, keep our privacy and protect people at the same time. And, you know, it's it's just disheartening to see that, you know, Apple, when Apple does something, everyone else follows Yeah, it makes suit, it acceptable for the right? industry. Like the latest Samsung phone has no charger in the box. Lovely. Yeah. Which we called. Yeah. We called it. Yeah. 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 
All right, so lighthearted, uh, easy breezy episode there. Um, but I'd love to hear uh, all of your thoughts. Um, please leave them in the comments below. And if you have any questions on this, it's about time for us to do another Q&A episode. We should probably do another yeah, Q&A so episode. Yeah, so about this or about anything that we've been discussing or about any of these issues, just drop them in the comments below or hit us up on Twitter and we will we'll do a, what is the word for it? A, um, an FU episode, follow up. Uh, and we have, we, we, can I tell them what we're going to talk about? Yeah, sure. We're going to talk about Captain Carter in a minute for the Nebula uh, bonus segment of this video. So you want to make sure that you're here for that. And all you have to do is go to curiositystream.com slash Apple Talk, sign up. It costs $15, which you said is less than most breakfasts. It is less than most breakfasts. <laughs> $15, not a month, a year. A year. A year. Yes. And you get Nebula rolled in, which Georgia has all her videos on Nebula now. I do have yep. them on now. I have my videos. There's Cinema Wins, Nando V Movies, MKBHD, Tech Alter, just Jordan Harrod, so much, so much good stuff, as, long, as well as all of Curiosity Streams. Uh, I've been watching a lot of the documentaries because they're not news. I've been like watching, they have some really, really amazing, like I don't want to go too far into this because I don't want to spoil it, but there's a guy who like tests if, if lightning is lethal or if explosion, like how close, can you simulate the TV explosion? He's like when people slow-mo walk out of explosions. Yes. He tests to see if that's realistic or not. By, so by much, actually having an explosion? Not, no spoilers. Oh, I'm intrigued um, now. So yeah, check that out, curiositystream.com. I'm going to sign up. You already, did, what? <laughs> Use my link. Um, <laughs> CuriosityStream.com slash Apple Talk. And if Georgia, if people are leaving us now, where can they find you? You can uh, send me an email, Georgia at WestmountTherapy.com. You can check out my channel, which is YouTube.com slash Georgia Dow. And if you're dealing with anxiety, depression, sleep issues, parenting, anxiety dash videos. How about you, Renee? Awesome. I am at YouTube.com slash Renee Ritchie or Twitter.com slash Renee Ritchie. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week.